Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do a beautiful forest scene, maybe with a little waterfall in the back, coming forward with a little river. I think it'll be really fun. And of course, if you're enjoying these, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. Let's get started. We'll start off today here with just a little bit of light purple on a, on a little filbert brush. And as you can see, I've spent oh, about five minutes or so <laughs> doing some sketching, just because this is a, kind of a complicated painting. At least I feel like it is for me. And uh, really, this is going to be like a waterfall here, some shrubs and rocks and river and cliffs and oh boy, <laughs> lots of stuff. And each piece kind of has to fit in the right spot in order to get the effect that I was going for. So that's why all the sketching. <laughs> but don't worry if you can't really envision it because I can't either. <laughs> it looks like just a big mess, but we'll sort it out later and figure it out and make it make it a little nicer. <laughs> there, we, we're not stuck to our sketch. We can kind of play around with it as we go. There. For now, just a soft little purple gray background. Not too much this purple, maybe a little black in here. There. Lots of bold brush strokes in here. Good. Next, I'm just gonna drag down a nice soft brown color here that's lighter than the background in order to create some trees. There. I'm gonna do this pretty quick. I don't want them all light. Just a few. I'm being super loose because who cares? This is mostly gonna be covered by by some darker trees. And there they come. Good. Now, I'm having them all stop down here, but don't worry, we're gonna chop it off with some grass. The grass is gonna come up like that. There we go, just drop in a few. Doesn't take a whole lot, just sorta of, sort of plan out where you think you might want them. You can always sort of melt them back into the background if you change your mind later. Next, with a beautiful soft green color on our filbert brush. I am going to just sort of think, well, right up here, sort of think about where I want my grass. And I'll tell you what, it's not worth the time or effort to try to paint around these trees because they were so quickly put in. It'd probably take you five or six minutes extra just to cut in the trees, cut it around the trees, so forget it. Just paint right over them. Go back and, and finish them, fix them later, who cares? <laughs> there you go, this is, the, this is the easy way to paint. Don't make life any harder than it needs to be when you come to that do this stuff here. Cool. Now, I'll tell you what, let's take this and adjust the color a little, maybe a little, oh, let's go a little touch of blue. How pretty would that be? And what that does is it gives us a nice deep, deep forest grass look. And I'm still being impressionistic with this. See that? Let it fade maybe up like that, good. <laughs> there we go. I like having the trees mapped out because then we just sort of the work's already done, we'll just drag them down and get our, get a lot of depth built in. And you'll see what I mean. There, I think we're gonna lower, I still have this brush going, so I'm gonna just come in and I'm gonna lower this area. See how you can make adjustments to your painting? Good. This is why I'm loose in the beginning, because I'm always kind of tweaking things around. I know we're gonna have a lot of stuff over this anyways. Good enough. Back to my other brush, and let's give, let's get a little bright spot in here. And the lights can be filtering through these trees, and right about here, <laughs> there you go. Yikes! A really bright spot, or two. All right, now I've changed to our little detail round brush here, and I'm just dropping in these beautiful little leaves. And watch it's just a little bit of white and blue, and I spin the brush so it comes out to a beautiful point. And then I simply just dot it right on. There, nice. And maybe right over here. Maybe this tree gets some. So what this is, maybe it's just like, uh, well, whatever these trees are, they have light colored leaves and they're getting backlit. It's just really pretty. I don't know that it really matters what it is. It's just really pretty. <laughs> and you know, if it's pretty, then it's kind of worth doing. It doesn't really, we don't have to explain everything. There. I love it. I'm just gonna do this over and over again until I get a decent amount of kind of backlit foliage in here. In fact, as you come away, I want you to go darker, almost like the shade of this background. See, this, some of these trees can have these darker colored leaves and that will help to make it look more realistic. Throw some green in it so that it really so that these, you can tell these are really backlit and bright, and the rest are kind of just not so backlit and darker. 
Now we're gonna go ahead and scrub in just some really nice background color. <laughs> Those re really nice as background color gets. I mean, it's just a little, little bit of yellow brown. <laughs> so we'll just sort of block in our little, our little stream here. And obviously you wanna block a stream this shallow in with browns and golds and all that because you're seeing the sand and the rocks underneath. A little bit of red goes a long way too. There, that red really is amazing in the foreground. It helps to bring you closer. There, because in a painting that's just not that deep, let's face it, this isn't like thousands of miles away. You gotta almost create more perspective than there normally would be if you snapped a photograph. All right, there we go. And that's sort of one of the fun parts of painting. You gotta get to, <laughs> you get to sort of do whatever you want. Cool. I'll just sort of finish up here. Grab a little bit of black and, you know, sort of start working on some of these rocks here. I mean, we're gonna do so much detail on top of these, so I'm just very quickly getting these in. Now with the filbert brush, I'm going to simply drop on some beautiful little highlight here to a clump of bushes or moss, or maybe this is ferns, I don't know. <laughs> Who cares? Didn't make any difference, does it? I'm just gonna throw some highlight out on here simply because it's nice. There. All right, and see, I'm just gonna sort of work my way across and just have fun with this, who cares? Who cares if it's perfect? And there you go, all right. See, in my mind, the light's sort of filtering through here today, and I just think that really adds a lot to the painting. Now, make sure you don't get everything kind of all the same. See that, that's the same, so watch this. Come up here and just, oops, break it up. Perfect. <laughs> there you go. All right, this is too fun. Maybe a bit up here. Now I'm gonna to begin to work on all the beautiful little water areas. Now, this might look like highlight, but it really isn't. This is sort of the dark color for the light part of the water, if that makes any sense. Cool, there. And I recommend you wipe down the area with a paper towel before you start to make life easy. There, just a little bit of blue and white. Touch of red just to kill the bright blue. That's all this is. There. Make sure you wipe off your brush on a paper towel or your palette, just whack it on the palette there in order to keep your paint color pretty clean. And there we have it. It's not overly speedy, but it sure is pretty. There's gonna be a lot of falls right here. Could be right, yeah, right here is kind of, there, you just sort of play with the angles until you get it the way you want it. And I'm just gonna do this over and over and over again. Don't cover up all your dark though. And be very careful that you get the angles that you want. You can always you can always erase this though. It's pretty simple to go back with some black and just cover it right up. So you're not locked in, don't, don't worry about it too much. Good. <laughs> and don't, don't put too many of these lines here in the water just yet. We're about to do something that's really cool. Now I'm gonna really make this water come alive by simply tossing in some yellow color. This is a little bit of yellow and white, that's all it is. And let's throw a little bit of brown in it every once in a while, not too much. And what this is gonna do is give us a highlight of rocks or sand under the water. And as crazy as it seems, you really do need a highlight underneath the water. <laughs> Super fun. There, just trust me. It'll work out once you put all these little things in. Over here, same. We gotta have some light, in fact, that's a little bit get a little more saturated, it's a little too light. There, don't want it chalky. Nice. Oh, I love it. And these are the rocks that are underneath the water and will float our highlights on top of the water. You know, like the little blue ones. There. This helps to helps to make the water look just a bit more transparent. I've decided to take a quick break from the water since we've been painting on the water for a few minutes. And I jumped up here, grabbed a little, little color and smooshed it around that creates some bushes and gives us somewhere for this little river to come out of. Now, obviously this still looks incomplete and it needs to be darkened just a little with the rocks around it. There, and obviously we'll have to highlight the water, but just gotta get these little bushes in. Now this could be rocks, this could be a huge clump of trees. You don't have to just do bushes, but I thought, well, this would be kind of fun. <laughs> so there you go. And I like these little flowers. Just a little bit of purple here. 
on my brush. And they're pretty subtle. I mean, you got to look at the painting for a little while to see there's flowers there, but not the first thing you see, but they're definitely there. <laughs> cool. All right, maybe, maybe over here we want some. Sure, you can throw the flowers down and figure out a bush to connect it to later. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just drop on some beautiful, beautiful highlights here to the water. And I'm repeating a very similar step that we did with the blue here. This is just a little bit of white, very simple. It's not pure white, I did throw just a touch of the yellow into it. And just to knock down the pureness of it. Because most of the time pure white is not great. Although it would mix with the brown and everything pretty quick. But I'm trying to keep this as pure as possible. Very bright. Okay, <laughs> there we go. I like it. Now I'm just going to drop in very quickly right here. A little bit of highlight to our cliff. I don't want a whole lot, just a bit. There we go. All right. That's pretty good. Didn't take much. Over here, maybe see, I've sort of thought about where I might want some rocks down here. I'm going to quickly just smudge in some color. No big deal. Okay. Filbert brush. Green. And I'm simply going to block in some green now. I see it actually has a lot of green. So we can use that as a base tone. Actually, I'll just jump right here to the highlight. So it's nice to underpaint with a lot of loose color. So we can just highlight with very carefully with a little bit of yellow and green. Good enough. Maybe we got to do something over here. Watch this. Got to show you this. <laughs> Take a little bit of our gray and I'm going to pull down here to create just a little extra something. You know, you, you don't want it to just be like a black hole. You got to stick something in it. Now with our three quarter brush, I'm going to drop in some moss up here to these rocks. See, I just quickly, just a little brown, just, you've seen me paint rocks like this before, over on the other side, very similar. Just sort of whacked in some color, and now I'm gonna go ahead and make them really pretty with some moss. Good. Now, Sophie actually helped me come up with this idea, this, this whole composition, actually, and we were talking about this painting. We decided we, these, all these rocks on this side should be covered with moss. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. almost forgot. So I really like that. I think that's fun. And pre-planning out a painting is actually super important. You probably heard me say it before, but oh, one of the best things you can do is kind of figure out what you're doing before you get, a, get the brush in your hand. All right. Well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out my website, my DVDs, and also my brush line. And thanks for watching.